Hey guys, just got done with a little project. Thought I would uh, enjoy a pipe and a uh, cold beer. Yeah, it's just a cord light. I don't have uh, very sophisticated tastes. I um, I do enjoy like a stout, a porter. I think my favorite style of beer is, uh, I've probably mentioned this before, the ESB, Extra Special Bitter, or Extra Strong Bitter. It's kind of a hard beer genre to, to find. I don't, I don't think it's as uh, mainstream as, you know, like a IPA or, you know, something like that. But, you know, when I'm, when I'm just relaxing at the end of an evening, I'll just take any domestic light out of a can. It's not my favorite beer. Um, that's such a tough, tough question because my, my tastes kind of migrate seasonally. Uh, I like, um, in wintertime I like heavier beers, summertime I like lighter beers. That's, that's kind of just the way it is. Uh, my favorite beer is probably going to be something that is an Oktoberfest. And, uh, I just love the malt characteristics in an Oktoberfest. I also really only like sessionable beers. I don't care for like the 10.5% ABV. That's just a, undrinkable for me. But I thought I would enjoy a, a little bit of um, Peter Stokeby's Luxury Navy Flake tonight. It's uh, one of my favorites. Hang on, I'll get the jar. One of the... Uh, Biggest rewards for building a cellar is you get to forget about what tobacco you have and just put it away. And uh, that's a fast driver right there. I'm the asshole in the neighborhood that clocks everybody's speeds, and that's some bullshit right there. Of course, it's you know probably 10 o'clock at night, but you know it's 25 through a neighborhood for crying out loud, people. I don't care where you gotta go unless it's a medical emergency which you should put your, or some type of emergency, you should put your flashers on and then haul ass, by all means, haul ass. But don't just drive down my street fast. That's some bullshit. Um, yeah, I know. Get off my lawn, right? Uh, Peter Stokeby's Luxury Navy Flake. And uh, let's see if I can get that. 612. So that would have been probably June of 2012. January, February. Yeah, I, I I remember buying it, um, but you know you put the you put the date on the jar. You got to put the date on the jar now. You buy a pound and you put the date on the jar, and that way you'll know. Oh, hell, this has got a little age on it, and that may be why this is so smooth. A lot of times your uh, navy flakes um, will give me a case of the tongue bite, you know, and it'll be so bad that I can't even eat like hot wings the next day, which is terrible because chicken is. Yeah, that's my favorite. But yeah, my tongue will be eat up, which I have not had a pipe in months because, you know, with the hot and cold weather and stuff, I, I tend to get a sore throat. And, you know, when I got a lot of congestion and a sore throat, the last thing in the world I want is a, uh, is a pipe, you know. I, I really just want water. I don't even drink a lot of beer. I do drink a little bit of bourbon, though. What bourbons do I like? I'm glad you asked. Pardon me. I left my tools in the toolbox. I, uh, I'm not a big, uh, I mean, the more of my videos, the more you'll, you'll find, more of my videos you watch, the more you'll find that my tastes are not refined. Uh, I like, um, I like sweet bourbons, if that makes any sense to you bourbon drinkers. Uh, like Maker's Mark is kind of a, you know, you get those sweet cherry notes, you know. Oddly, I don't care for smoky liquors. I don't care for smoky, uh, I guess that's more true with scotch than it is bourbon. I don't care for smoky sc scotches. I like the briny scotches. <laughs> oh my gosh, excuse me. Look at the lake up there. But I kind of like, you know, the sweet, um, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be an ultra complex or a single barrel bourbon for me to enjoy it. I'm not a 
connoisseur. I've got friends who know a lot about bourbon and who, uh, you know, they, they, they have their picks on, you know, what they're going to have for different occasions and whatnot. I'm, I, I tell you, I did stumble into a good cocktail though. You know, I really like, like my favorite cocktail of all time is seven and seven. I love the seven and seven. Um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's cheap, you know, it's easy. Uh, and I just, I just love that, that taste, you know, the, the seven up or Sprite or Sierra Mist or whatever. And the, um, Seagram's seven, or, you know, you can use any Canadian whiskey really. So consequently, I like bourbon and seven. But I'll tell you what, as I get older, I don't like the syrupy, sugary drinks as much as I did when I was younger. I actually made the other night, and I apologize if I'm repeating myself, I made a bourbon and club soda over ice. And at first, I, I really thought, you know, this may be bad. Absolutely delicious, refreshing. And it wasn't heavy. You know, it didn't sit down on you like a big sugary drink would, you know. It was actually, uh, it was refreshing and light. So if you're like me, you're 40 years old and you're trying to quit drinking, you know, all the soft drinks, you know. Try that bourbon and club soda. I think you'll like it. If you like a 7 and 7 or a, or a, or something like that, get you a little, get you a little club soda. Mix it up. It's just not as sweet. I really enjoyed it. So we went way off. Uh, I didn't really have a topic, but we went right, way off topic and went all the way from beer to tobacco to bourbon. I think I mentioned I'm smoking a luxury flake from luxury navy flake from 2012, and uh, you know I've really gotten my cellar. It's not. It's not large by any means. I couldn't really tell you how many pounds I've got. Most of it has been bought in bulk and jarred. Uh, last year, I started a pretty much tens only policy. Um, tens are a little more expensive. However, they're easier to uh, store. So you just slap them in a drawer or on a shelf. You don't have to have jars. But I got to the size to where I'm kind of focusing more on kind of high dollar blends like not to take anything away from luxury navy here you know but it's a cheaper blend you know you you can get that per pound at a very reasonable price you know as with all the stoke to be blends you know they're reasonably priced so i kind of started out with a heavy hand of those but i've moved into more like the glp stuff uh I used to buy the Peterson Christmas stuff, but I just got to where I couldn't stand it. It was just so sickly sweet, I just couldn't smoke it. So, if you like it, by all means, but it's just not for me. So now, I'm, I'm only buying, I'm, I'm mainly just buying tins. Boy, a few weeks without a pipe, and this is absolutely delicious, my story. Mm. So I'm not sure if I told you about the project I've been working on tonight. Uh, I had I had to kind of delete a video. It, it it just didn't it didn't work like I wanted it to. I have a lot of I have kind of a tendency to walk with the camera, and I'm not using any kind of selfie stick or anything. So my unsteady hands. I don't want to make anybody sick, you know. But um, my wife wanted this thing to uh, hold her coffee cups. I'm over here looking at it right now. I wanted something to hold her coffee cups. And uh, so when I say hold her coffee cups, I'm talking about those little cup hooks. We've got some like kind of old style coffee cups that she wants to display rather than drink out of. So we've got this um, uh, wall in our kitchen dining area that uh, we're going to mount this thing to. When I say this thing, I'm referring to an item that she saw on Pinterest and said, can you make this? And I said, yes, I can. And what it is, is a pallet that has been cut in half. So, you know, your, your pallet, you know, she's kind of square. Well, I'll cut it in half. And uh, 
so it's like a rectangle. And I've stained it. I sanded it and stained it, you know. I mean, it, it still looks like a palette. We still want it to look like a palette. But it's uh, sanded and stained. And, yeah, I kind of left some of the rough edges around it. And I, I hit it with a stain that I'm going to try to match our kitchen table eh, somewhere close, color-wise. So I'll tell you what. I'm going to walk with the camera for a bit, and I'll show you what I've been doing. So, get you more here. Bear with me. Hmm, Kamoy uh, pipe. It's a, a love it, love that, love it. I say love it. Love it, baby. Here we go. I'm using the front facing camera, so bear with me on this camera shot. Here we go. Hold on. Kind of going to glide over it here. I, um, I stained it. And it's a little uneven, uh, but that's okay. I've got some steel wool, and I'm going to um, go over it tomorrow with a little bit of steel wool, as the directions say. Try to even it out and put a second coat on. I think it's going to work really well. So we'll have cup hooks at seeming random intervals, and uh, mount it to the wall. Probably with a uh, French cleat, and uh, or a cleat. I don't know if they people even call them French cleats anymore. Uh, just a cleat. And there are absolutely more experienced woodworkers that could tell you all about cleats. Uh, I've used them before. They're uh, they're really pretty easy if you've got a good stud finder, which I happen to have. It's um, oh cool with this with this view you can kind of see some stuff in my in my garage up here I make brackets to hang my coolers uh, with I'm really proud of that so I've got two hanging coolers that kind of gets them off the floor now that being said I've got a multitude of junk that I'm still kind of trying to get organized but uh, right here this poster that's my Starrett tap drill chart I'm really proud of that the LS Starrett company is a terrific company they you know, they put out those little pocket-sized tap drill charts, um, and you can actually write them, and they will send you a full-size one, which they did me, and I mounted it in a poster frame on the wall. There's my Coors Light beer mirror right there. I, I, you know, I saved that thing for probably 10 years, waiting for a good place to hang it, and I finally found one right here above my beer fridge, which is a 1952 International Harvester, and um, it still runs. I don't know if it has the original internals. I assume it does. Um, but, you know, who cares? It works. And uh, that's about the extent of the exciting stuff. Let's see, right over here, it's like a set of golf clubs that I really just need to get rid of. So. Yeah, there's my Delta drill press. Good deal. Hmm. There's a lot of interesting stuff in this shot. But, uh, boy, this has turned into a ramble. I'm at 13 minutes. I better shut this off. 14 minutes. I better shut this off because um, the YouTube police will, uh, will get after me. I cannot upload a video longer than 15 minutes, they say. What's annoying is I can't even upload a video that's over 15 minutes and trim it down. That's what kind of made me mad, but rules are rules. Not a big deal. I'll uh, talk to you guys later on. Thanks for staying with me.